And we're back. Mike Stern at Sternwich.com. You know, weird thing, weird thing always happens. Whenever I talk about, um, you know, energy or vibe, people go, oh, you're melting down, man. It's like, I do videos every day. How, how, how many videos have you watched me do? Thousand? How many videos, how many videos do you think I've done? I don't know, like a thousand, maybe two thousand, you know, videos. So f for years I've done videos. Have you ever seen me melt down? And then when I talk about energy, people go, oh, you're melting down, melting down. No, you can see that my videos are, are quite consistent through time. And I watched Scott Adams' Periscope because he had some interesting um, insights in regards to um, what I said. He goes, oh, you know, Cernovich tweet about the energy and I could feel it too. Now, what Adams was suggesting was that we're moving from a world where we thought facts matter to where facts don't matter. And my perspective is a little bit different. Well, a little bit different. We're, we're, the reason, so let me talk to you what I mean by energy. Like three weeks ago, I just, I felt weird, man. Even like my, my whole, uh, what do you call it? Um, equilibrium. My equilibrium was thrown off for no reason, right? My life is better than it's ever been. I've never had a better life. Objectively, by the numbers, uh, you know, I'm seeing reality through a completely different lens now through my daughter. I, I get to work from home. I have all you great people support me and help me. And I hear great things about my books and I held a big seminar. And I just fell off though. I was like, what's going on? And then I started talking to other friends, very, very successful, high consciousness people. And they were go, they're like, man, I feel depressed, you know? And these are not depressed people. These are very successful, accomplished, happy people. And I just, and these, these are again, very high frequency people. We're talking about people at the highest level of their, their fields. And I just noticed, like, everyone I talked to was like, dude, I feel depressed. I don't know why. It's so weird. I've been in a slump. I feel like I'm in a funk. I don't really know what it is. And that's why I tweeted that because even some people notice, like, I feel like the movie's turning dark. Now, dark doesn't always mean evil. Dark just means there's a new act, right? So a lot of my language confuses people because I'm not always precise. I mean, it's Twitter. You know, what do you do? But when I say the movie's going dark, I don't mean monsters are coming. I mean, it's going dark. Like, what, what now? And here's where the blockchain comes in. And this kind of um, buttresses Scott Adams' point. Maybe it's the same point. Maybe it's different. I've no if you notice that we watch Adam, if you watch Adams and me, you'll notice one, one thing. We talk about the same things, but with different words, right? I remember when I read his book, How to Fail at Everything, I was like, wow, this is a book on mindset. But he only mentioned like mindset one or two times. He talked about the same things that I talk about. So it's like we're plugged into the same energy, but we interpret it slightly differently. And what Adam sees is he goes, well, the delusion bubble has been popped. We used to think that facts matter and we no longer think facts matter. And because that delusion bubble has popped, we feel differently. So my perspective is a little bit different. It has to do with blockchain. We now, we now live in a world where experts don't matter, right? I mean, th just think about this on a very deep fundamental level but beneath the, the superficial. Because the, the media goes, oh, there's no shared set of facts, but a bad thing, we want to be your shared set of facts. So there's a war right now, and we can all feel the war. The war is that the media, for the first time in history, has lost its power to unilaterally declare war. I mean, think about that. Just think about, that's why I've always said people go, oh, you must be smoking weed. I don't have to because when I think about what is happening, I have like a whoa, whoa moment. I don't need marijuana. Think about it. The media, we would be at war with Syria if it weren't for social media, right? WMDs, when the New York Times said there were WMDs in Iraq and we needed to go, you know, kill a bunch of brown people, there was no way to do anything about that. That was just the end of it, okay. Well, the New York Times said there's WMDs, there are WMDs, let's go to Iraq and let's go kill a bunch of brown people and hell yeah, man, hell yeah.
Great times. Ha, 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 ha. Murder. Murder is so fun. Let's murder people. <laughs> oh, that clip will never be. That clip will never be taken out of context. That's another thing, too, I've noticed that I'm, I'm really disappointed in a lot of people is they'll hear, like, audio clips that are clearly, clearly fabricated and edited together. And it's like, well, where are the videos, right? Learn how audio can be edited. Because right now I go, ha, 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 murder is good. If you hear me saying murder is good three years ago, three years from now on some, like, audio thing, just think it, think it through for a minute, okay? Think, think about that, you know, be... Be a little bit more skeptical of, you know, audio clips floating around. So, yeah, when the New York Times said, let's go murder brown people, you just, we had to do it. We had to go kill, kill people in the Middle East. And now they can't do that now. Now, what does this have to do with the blockchain? Well, do, do you know how money works? The Federal Reserve controls the money supply, right? I mean, think about it. The, I mean, th think about the federal government, the Federal Reserve is losing the power, is losing the power to control currency and fiat. That's the blockchain. The blockchain is a distributed network that solves all the problems that we have with finance, but more broadly, it's like a philosophy, it's like a way of life. That's some people go, oh, you know, Bitcoin. I don't, I'm, okay, hate Bitcoin. I don't care, okay? But we're, we're going to a decentralized consciousness. Do you understand? That's what blockchain is. Right now, we live in a centralized currency. We have a Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve sets the interest rate. They determine the money supply. They work on the unemployment rate. That's all centrally decided by the Board of Federal Reserves. Well, Bitcoin right, is different. Bitcoin is infinitely divisible. There is no central you know, fiat printer that can just buy dictator, edict, print more, print less. And control over the ledgers distributed throughout, you know, throughout the world. So the same is being true of media, journalism. So rather than just turning on CBS and going, oh, this is the truth, rather than going on ABC. It used to be before social media, and this is why they, they hate social media. And this is why if, you know, if I, I go back into, you know, she see I'm getting much more philosophical and less political stuff, that there's so much great commentary now, I feel like I don't really need to do much. You now can see the clips. You can say, well, why didn't Stepanopoulos? I mean, think about it. Did you know George Stepanopoulos was a Clinton Foundation donor. And George Stephanopoulos was a communications director for Democrats. Well, you wouldn't have known that 20 years ago. Why not? Because the media wouldn't tell you that. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, your only understanding of reality came from what the media told you and the facts that they told you. If they told you Mike Cernovich was a bad guy, then you would just say, Cernovich is a bad guy, what a monster. And now you can be like, well, wait a minute. I mean, I've watched the guy do like a thousand videos. I've never seen him lose his temper other than goofing off. I've seen him spill coffee on himself and laugh about it. So, right, so they've, the media's lost the power. And so there's this consciousness shift, like tectonic plates. It's like an earthquake is happening. But the earthquake is more spiritual. The earthquake is more metaphysical. The earthquake is all metaphorical, right? But you can feel it. The plates are shifting, and th that's the energy that we're all feeling. That's why every, everything is changing, because we're moving from a, a centralized understanding of the world to a decentralized understanding of the world. So if you're tuned in to the energy of the world, you can feel it, right? You can just, you can just feel, okay, there's a shift. And that's also why there's so much negativity in the world, too, because the, there are people who don't want the shift to happen. The shift that is happening is that the people now are having the power. For the first time in history, the people have the power. I don't know how, how old are you people watching. How old are you, um, how old are you people who are watching? 
34, okay, so a little younger. So a lot of you, 54, okay. Most of you won't remember the Vietnam War and can't appreciate this. But did you know, did you know, and this is not that long ago, did you know that the government could take you and say you're gonna go to a rice paddy field and you're gonna get shot at and you're gonna watch your friends die and there's nothing you can do about it because we have something in America called the draft. It's very, very hard for people to comprehend now because we've had a voluntary army and because we have, you know, AC-130s and gunships and technology is better, you don't need as many soldiers. But they could just kidnap you. The government could kidnap you and force you to go to war. I mean, think about that. I, I, it's incomprehensible, right? But they, but they did that. They could do that too. They could just steal you and say you're going to – the draft, correct. They could just steal you and say you're going to go to Vietnam. Like it or not, and if you don't do it, you're going to go to prison, right? They could not have the draft today with social media, right? They could not have the draft today with social media. Think about how profound that is. The, the, um, the draft protest would be too big. There'd be a million people in the streets as you'd shut down D.C., so people don't really think about that. You, could, you couldn't have the draft now with social media. It just wouldn't happen. So we went from a centralized power to decentralized, decentralized power. The people are now getting power. Blockchain is power to the people. That's why these institutions hate it so much. Blockchain is their power to the people. Social media is power to the people. Social media are just regular people, just regular people getting together and, you know, talking about life. We've never been in a position like this before. And that's why the media, they hate social media so much because they are now losing the power to dictate who goes to war. They're losing the power. You can't just draft people anymore. I mean, look what happened to those two black guys in Philadelphia Starbucks. That was wrong what happened to them. Can't just do things like that anymore. Now people go, oh, well, they did it. Well, they're dealing with the consequences now, right? So with, with social media now, you can't just treat people that way anymore. Now we're still transitioning. We're still transitioning, but in like three, four years from now, you're the police. You're going to know there are cameras everywhere. You're not going to just treat people like that, right? You're going to say, we can't treat people that way anymore. We have to treat people better. Why? Because people, because people don't want to lose their power anymore. They don't want to lose their rights anymore. They don't want to trust a central figure, a central authority, because our central authorities cannot be trusted. The, the housing market crash, the war in Iraq, every big colossal, because here's the thing about, here's the thing that, about social media and the problems. Does social media, is it perfect? No. Does misinformation happen? Yes. I'm a victim of misinformation. People lie about me just in the most horrific ways and there's really nothing you can do because if you address the lies, you give more attention to it. And if you don't address the lies, then some percentage of people are going to believe it, right? It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. So I'm a victim of misinformation every day of my life. That's the downside of social media. The upside of social media is that for me to be murdered and put into a gulag, that would require government regulation. So to really hurt people on a massive level, you need the media and the government cahoots. That was how they were able to do the Vietnam War. That is how they were able to do the housing market collapse and bubble. That is how they were able to do the bailouts. That is how they were able to do the war in Iraq. They can't do it anymore, though. You couldn't have another war in Iraq with social media. It just wouldn't happen. You just, you couldn't have 
another war, a Vietnam War draft. You just couldn't do it. Because when the New York Times says, oh, we got to go to Vietnam to fight the commies, you would say, well, you're lying. I mean, here's live streams from, you know, social media. You're lying. Just, you're liars, right? You're lying. So the problem, you know, so the problems with social media is, again, even though I'm a victim of it, the plus sides are so far over the other side of the ledger. The pluses really are, come here, buddy. Oh, Julius, you want to come over here, little guy? Come here. Come on. You can come over here in my lap. Julius is a little snuggle dog. Come here. Come on. You can come up here. Julius is a little, little lap dog. Oh, he really is the sweetest dog. You want to say hi to the people? You want to say hi to people? Yeah, so even, um, so that's the shift we're feeling. The shift we're feeling is one from there were centralized facts and there were centralized experts and there was a centralized understanding of the world and now it's decentralized. Yeah, but the Syria bomb was just, that's why people go, oh, Cernovich, the bombing was limited. No kidding. That's why I threw a fit. It's like a lot of people, by the way, this is another thing like people are like, oh, you said you don't care if Trump's impeached. Do people not know that I make jokes on Twitter? Yet? God, I'm so glad to just lose all these dumb people. Are there people right now who haven't figured out that I like to make jokes on the internet? People, so people are like passing that around. You said you don't care if Trump's impeached. My God, please unfollow me. Jeez, right? Just how, like, rec learn how to recognize satire. Learn, right? Learn, people on Twitter crack jokes and say things that are completely just over the line because it's funny. I couldn't believe it. 10,000 people got triggered over that. Still mad about it today. It's like, oh my God, you know? It's like the, you can't even crack a joke with these people. This is a, um, is a mini Aussie doodle. Hey, Jules, you want to say hi to the people? Jules is a mini Aussie doodle and part Labradoodle, part Australian Shepherd, and he is a total... Stage five clinger. He is, he's a, the sweetest dog I've ever had, but he is like a total clinger. And I'm like, Julius, dude, I'm trying to work, trying to type, trying to, you know, trying to, trying to do things. Yeah, so I'm, kind, you know, the, that's another thing too is I'm, um, I'm, when you get as famous as I am, then people, you just, you, you catch too many normies, you know. You don't get it. So I just, I need to become less famous. I'm working on it. But I, yeah, I enjoy having fun. But anyway, so Scott Adams' Periscope was a good one. I'll link to it. Scott Adams said that he noticed the, shame, the, the same energy shift that I've noticed. His interpretation is that people have moved from a world where they thought facts mattered to a world where facts don't matter. My interpretation, and again, it could be we're interpreting things the same way. My interpretation is that we're moving from a world where information and knowledge was given to us in a centralized manner by the priesthood to one where you got to figure it out yourself, which, by the way, is a scary thing. There is a, a scary, it's very scary to know like, all right, you got to figure it out. <laughs> right. The the experts are wrong. The experts don't know anything. The experts are all wrong. You got to just figure this out yourself, man, sir, madam, gender non-binary. You just got to figure it out. And that's, that's a load of responsibility. Definitely a, uh, a load of responsibility. And that, but anyway, that's what we're feeling. That's the vibe. That's the shift. The shift from a centralized, centralized authority to decentralized, decentralized. What you doing? To decentralized authority. That's where we're headed to. So you gotta just. You can't trust the experts. The experts are all wrong. You can't trust the media. It's all fake news. And now we're shifting to, you know, something else. Now, what are we shifting to? I don't really know yet. That's why people go, bro, are you good? 
I've talked about this stuff for years. Uh, I just, I think a lot of people are so disconnected from the deeper, the divine, the spirituality. Right? That's the problem. A lot of people, they're so, they're just shallow. They, they think what you see is all that animates humanity. Right? They think that, that if you see human behavior, you, you, all you see is that behavior. Well, what created that behavior? What caused that behavior? What manifested that behavior on a massive scale, right? That's kind of what I've always been interested in is mass movements. Um, the Salem witch trials, right? Why is there like a collective hysteria? Why, you know, Pol Pot, right? Pol Pot, the, Ca the Cambodian genocide, Mao, the, uh, the, the Great Leap Forward. These are like massive movements, collective movements, so why is that, right? That's, that's what I'm interested in. What is that energy, paradigm, aura? Why does this stuff seem to happen on like a very big scale, right? Why, why do these changes seem to happen suddenly and on like a big scale? They go from there's nothing to, wow, where did all this come from? Same thing with the Trump movement, right? Media goes, oh, this Trump guy doesn't have any shot. I was like, no, he does. Not only does he have a shot, but he's going to win. What caused the Salem witch trials? I don't know. An energy, a force. That's, I don't know. That's the whole thing. I don't know why ideas spread like a virus, right? I don't know. The Great Awakening, the Renaissance. I, I don't know. The, the, the anime, that's my quest is always to discover what it is. Like, why did this happen? What caused it? What were, you know, what were the forces animating it? How did it seem to spread so rapidly, right? I don't, I don't know. I'm just thinking, yeah, if Thomas Paine's Common Sense was a manifesto that went viral. Before social media, you had people printing zines and pamphlets and everything. And then more and more and more spread. I don't. I don't know. So, but 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 I'm not afraid to admit when I don't know things, right? I think that's the difference. Is I don't pretend to know what is happening. I know that we're going to go one of two ways in America. We're either going to go to gulags or we're going to move to a new form of a free humanity that no one's ever had. Because when you look at the pushback, they want to shut down free speech. Look at what's free. They want to ban Bitcoin. They want to ban free speech. What does Bitcoin and free speech have in common? Think about that. That's a real question. What do Bitcoin and free speech have in common? Well, I'll tell you what they have in common. Bitcoin and free speech are both decentralized. The idea is, hey, come to my talk, read my book. Here's what we have to say, right? Versus this is the message. Here's what you have to believe. There's only one way, the one way to view it, right? That's the difference is the media is like the Federal Reserve of Energy. The media prints out facts like fiat currency. The media prints out facts untethered from a gold standard, just like the Federal Reserve prints out currency untethered from any gold standard, any objective standard. The media is therefore attacking social media because that's a decentralized information network. The fiat facts, as I like to call them, are at risk. So the media... The media's ability to print fiat facts is at risk. And that's why they're freaking out in the way they're freaking out. And they want to get violent. They want to get bloody. They want to imprison people. They want to frame people. They want to destroy people, right? Just like the Fed wants to destroy 
cryptocurrencies. They want to make it so that there's only one single arbiter of value. Because information is value, money is a store of value, fiat currency is a representation or a social belief in value. A dollar is a social construct, right? A dollar has no intrinsic value. A dollar is a social construct. And is based on belief, and the belief is that this dollar will have money, and, this, and the belief that other people will give me things in exchange for this money. I mean, it's really amazing if you ever just look at money, just look at it. Why? It's just paper, right? Well, you'll kill for that paper. You'll die for that paper. Because we impose meaning onto the money. Just like the media gives us facts that aren't true, and we impose meaning based on those facts. Today's a great example. The media goes, Trump said, oh, there are, no His are there any Hispanics here? I don't think so, right? So Trump was at a, Trump was at a tax reform conference, and he goes, are there any Hispanics here? No, I don't think so. Oh my God, that's the media what they want to say is true. Five years ago, they would have gotten away with it. Five years ago, people would go, that racist Trump just said there aren't any Hispanics here. But you could immediately go on social media and see that it was a clip and he was sitting next to a Hispanic guy and they were joking. And there were a lot of Hispanics in the audience, right? So five years ago, the media would have said, Donald Trump today said Hispanics don't own small businesses, even though Cubans are very entrepreneurial. Is that racist to say? I'm sorry. I don't want to I don't want to be a racist and generalize, but Cubans who fled communist Cuba are very entrepreneurial people. Why? Cuz they left <laughs> they left communism, they didn't want communism to come back, so they had to figure out a way to make it, so they're very entrepreneurial. You know, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be racist, but they, you know it is what it is. And so it was a joke to the Cubans in the audience. So five years ago, the media could have just said, wow, Trump yet again insulted Hispanics. There'd be press releases from all these Latino groups. Trump would have to apologize. I'm so sorry. And now you just go on social media like, wait a minute, he was joking. And he was sitting next to a Hispanic when they do it. And he was talking to a lot of Cubans and Cubans like Trump. Oh, so this is another fiat fact. So it's like every day is like that, right? Every day, so like every day is like that, where the centralized media, the Federal Reserve Board, is trying to print out fiat facts. And then the blockchain is trying to put out true facts. Yeah, the audience loved Trump in there. Everybody, it was great. Everybody was loving it, Right? So that's where, that's where we're at now. So everywhere you look now, there's an attack from the central authorities against, yeah, fiat facts. I, I, I just invented that in this periscope. Okay, I can't claim that I invented that in this periscope. I can't prove it, but I know that I never read it anywhere. So today I came up with this analogy between um, fiat facts and the, the media versus fiat money in the Federal Reserve. So I think I invented it. I don't know. Maybe somebody else has used it. You know, I don't want to plagiarize anybody, even accidentally. But I've never heard anybody use fiat facts. And I think that's going to catch on memetically. Right when I said fiat facts, I knew right away that memetically that was going to have power. And people were going to start spreading that. And I knew right away they were going to start talking about how the media is like the Federal Reserve, and they're just printing out fiat facts. Facts unmoored from any kind of objective standard of reality or objective standard of truth. So sometimes you do things and you just know. Sometimes you just know. Well, the New World Order is centralized. The New World Order and the globalism is centralization. There was an article in the New York Times about hyper-localization. Where people are saying, we want to take back over, we need to take back over 
our communities. But that's the opposite of globalization. Why should Brussels control immigration levels in Hungary? Can you tell me why? Why should Brussels control the levels of immigration in Budapest, Hungary? Can you tell me one good reason why they should be able to do that? Can you tell me one reason in the world why people in Brussels should have any power to tell people in Poland or Hungary how many immigrants they have to take in? There's no logical, you can't make a logical argument supporting that. You're just like, will the power, sheer will the power. That's where people understand my work is they think that, they think that when I mention will to power, I'm saying that that's good. I'm only telling you what the world is. And globalization is just pure will to power, which is Brussels says, we can just control Hungary. We can just control you. Why? Because we can. There is no why. The only why is because we can sheer will to power. And that were the Clintons, sheer will to power. They had no principles, no, no morals. And they were able to just rule with an iron fist because of will to power. So the, the new world order is centralization, hyper-localization. Now, a lot of people, this is like a mail trait. Well, actually, blockchain, there's agreed upon protocols. Read the white paper. Look, I understand, bro. It's called a metaphor. Hyper-literal thinkers will never get the full Cernovich experience. People who are hyper-literal, they're going to miss satire, they're going to miss subtext, they're going to miss metaphor, they're going to miss all the... I think that what makes my work beautiful and different from other people is the, the, the way I push boundaries, the way I use satire and parody, the way I, I definitely cross lines in an effort to show people where the lines are. My willingness to, I don't know, meander, go down rabbit holes. That's, to me, the beauty of the work that we do together. And we, we are working on this together. It is work that we do together. To me, that's what makes what we do fun. And I got boring. Blue wave in November, I think you're right, sir. Um, maybe you're a Democrat. Welcome to my uh, Periscope. But um, yeah, when I said I thought there would be a blue wave in November, people got staring at you being negative. And then suddenly it came out two days ago that the Republicans are spending $250 million because they are afraid. So all those people who go, Cernovich, you're being negative. There won't be a blue wave. You don't know what you're talking about. It's like, well, I mean, wait a minute. Um... It's like, wait a minute. Why are the Republicans going to spend $250 million? Right? So now it's like, oh, maybe you were wrong, right? So maybe you were wrong. That's, that's what gets me. People go, Cernovich, you're negative. There won't be a blue wave. Well, the Republicans are going to spend $250 million. So maybe there's something to it. Because I feel the energy on the left. Guys, I feel we're we're in a I call it, we're in a we're in a populist movement, and Trump was right wing populism, and the blue wave is left wing populism. But the energy is the same. The energy is there. The momentum's changed. So Trump was a right wing populist movement, and the blue wave is a left wing populist movement. That's why I don't believe any of these polls either way. People are saying, oh, Republicans are narrowing the gap. Or, I don't believe the polls. I believe the energy. Right? I, I believe in the energy that I feel. And the energy I feel is on the side of liberals. Right? The energy I feel is on the side of the left. I don't feel energies from Republicans. Just the way it is. So you can, you know... You can be mad at that. I don't really care if you're mad at that. People go, oh, da 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 da. Like, oh, fine, be mad. I'm just telling you what I feel. You don't have to, you know, pay attention. Yeah, they're just, they're the people that, yeah, the energy is just uh, shifted. And that's fine. Hold on, I gotta. Delete some things real quick. 
the energy is shifted to the left. And if you don't like that, find a way to shift it to the right. Now, a lot of people are going... Now, there are a lot of people who... A lot of people who don't want to hear it, and that's fine. I don't care about the polls either way, people. I didn't care about the polls when they said Trump was going to lose. I love how people now have gone from never trust the polls, they're fake, to, well, the polls are saying now. Well, which is it? Are the polls right or are they? Are the, are the polls accurate or aren't they, right? Do you trust the polls or do you not trust them? Right? you got to kind of... I don't trust them. I, I trust the energy that I feel, and I feel a lot of energy from the left, and I don't feel a lot of energy on the right. And I don't even believe left and right mean anything anymore. You know, I don't believe these terms even mean anymore. It's just populism. Well, that's all I have for now. If you want to read more, cernrich.com. C-E-R-N-O-V-I-C-H dot com. Read the blog. We like to go deep. I'm going deeper, people. Less politics, more philosophy, more talks like this. I'm, politics, whatever, man. There's enough people doing politics now. Go to Cernovich dot com. C-E-R-N-O-V-I-C-H dot com.